How's everybody doing today? This is Jay with Midstate Land Solutions. So uh, we're going to do a quick review of our Midsota trailer. This was a viewer requested video. Um, we're just going to do a quick breakdown of things I like, things I don't like, and let me know what you guys think. Before we go on, make sure to click like, subscribe to our channel. Please comment if you guys got anything that you guys want to see or hear about or hear me ramble on about. Let me know. I'm more than happy to do it. Let's get started. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. This is a 2019 Midsota. It's a 24 foot total length, uh, six foot stationary with an 18 foot tilt deck. Um, this is their TB. WB, which stands for Tilt Bed Wide Body Series, and it is a full 102 inches wide on this deck here. You can see we've got drive over fenders right here, very, very stable, and we still have 102 inches wide throughout the top. Oh, hi, Annie. Are you going to help us? All right. A uh, little bit about this trailer. We actually got this trailer. We traded this trailer uh, for another trailer that we had. Funny story, we were selling a, a big 25,000 pound pennel tag trailer and there was a gentleman that was interested in our trailer but he had to sell his trailer first before he could purchase ours and uh, throughout conversation we just actually very quickly learned that the trailer he was trying to get rid of was the exact trailer that we were looking for which is this trailer. So we made out a deal and traded actually straight up for uh, trailer for trailer. So. Worked out really, really well. Everybody was happy at the end. Um, overall, great trailer. Had it about a year, been working with it for about a year. Super, super handy. There's a couple things I really, really like about it. There's a couple things that um, I don't necessarily care for, but overall, love it. We'll get started with the axles. So we've got two 8,000 pound axles on this trailer. Um, they're not Dexter axles. I don't know what brand they are off the top of my head, but uh, for the most part, I haven't really had any problems with them that I know of. I uh, just got to keep them greased, of course, check tire pressures and stuff like that. 7,000-pound um, axles have kind of been the standard in the past. You can see here on this trailer, our Hydro Cedar trailer, it's got the Dexter 7,000-pound axles. Dexter seemed like they had the market for a lot of years on those axles. Uh, they've been great axles, and I've got nothing, nothing but good things to say about them. But I can tell you that these 8,000 pound axles are definitely handy um, for the extra weight capacity. As you guys know, equipment is not really getting any lighter, and it seems like more and more we're using bigger and bigger equipment. That extra weight capacity definitely is nice. So, like the axles on them. One thing I don't love. Ugh. Excuse me. One thing I don't like about this trailer, and I wouldn't even necessarily say that this is a trailer issue. However, this is just the nature of a tilt bed trailer. Here on the rear, obviously there's going to be a hinge point somewhere in the middle of this tilt bed section. Obviously let the trailer tilt down. When this trailer is empty and you're going down the road and you hit a bump, there is quite a bit of rebound or bounce on the tail end of this trailer. So when you're when you're empty, you can definitely feel that tail bouncing around a little bit. Not a huge deal. It's not unsafe. It, it, it just You can just feel it as you're driving in the truck. Um, just something that I don't really like. I don't think that that's necessarily a mid-soda issue. I think it's the nature of having an 18-foot tilt bed trailer or tilt section with this much unsupported at the rear from that hinge point. So... Put that in the column of dislikes. Like I said, not really a huge deal. Um, as far as the tilt bed operation goes, pretty simple, pretty standard for most tilt bed trailers. Safety, pull the safety pin, unlatch this. Obviously, there's going to be another latch on the other side. And then you've got a hydraulic valve right here. And what this does is there's actually a pretty much like a like a dampener or a cushion um, hydraulic cylinder. And it's got a it's real small orifice for that hydraulic fluid to flow through. So as you're driving a piece of equipment up and it starts to lower down, it doesn't come slamming down on the trailer. Better for the trailer, better for the tow, um, for the tow vehicle. It is nice. One thing you just want to be aware of is that you keep this valve open whenever you're loading a piece of equipment. If you do get a piece of equipment up here and you have that valve closed, you're not going to, that hydraulic fluid's not going to want to run back um, into the other side of that cylinder or that hydraulic cylinder and it's going to put a lot of pressure on the trailer um, and the hydraulic system there. So not a huge deal, but just make sure you keep that 
open when loading so that fluid can flow. And there's that hydraulic cylinder right there. So obviously I did a little bit of towing with this the other day in the salt. I need to get this thing into the uh, into the shop or the wash bay and, and cleaned off if I can. But oh, Annie. Annie. Jeez. All right. You, you are just, you're just wanting to help, aren't you? Or it might be dinner time, I don't know. Okay, moving on. Uh, tongue toolbox up here, super helpful. A nice little lock there, you can lock up your stuff. Um, you've got all your chains, chain binders, everything like that. The battery for the breakaway system is in there as well, nice and protected. So, I really like the toolbox, it's all welded in place and everything, so. Super handy. Um, really nothing remarkable up here on the uh, tongue of the trailer. Safety chains, breakaway chain. Had to put a new coupler on it. Uh, there was a pinnel on this thing. We put the two and five sixteenths on there. All of our trailers that we have or that I have, whatever, are two and five sixteenths with the exception of the uh, tag trailer for the we pull with the tandem. It's, it's a pinnel, of course, but everything else is two and five sixteenths, so try to keep everything uniform. Uh, this big jack right here is probably a 10 or 12,000 pound jack. I don't find myself having to utilize the uh, capacity of the jacks very often because typically when I'm using it to unhook, my trailer is empty. At least I try to keep it that way. That's not to say I haven't used it a couple times and I mean it, I, I totally understand the concept of having a big heavy jack on here. If you do have a piece of equipment loaded on the trailer, you want to make sure you can unhook it from your truck. The trailer is right, or the jack is rated for the weight that you're going to be lifting off. I get it. I do like some of the smaller jacks. Like my dump trailer's got a 7,000 pound jack on there. Uh, like I said, I don't find myself having to unhook very often when I'm loaded. So the 7,000 pound jack, a little bit easier to use, a little quicker. Not bad though. Just, just I could take it or leave it. And over here we've got some track grips and this is something that the previous owner had put on. We did not put this on. Um, very, very helpful. When I when it showed up with them on there, I kind of thought, eh, like nice, nice, a nice clean deck. Um, kind of looks tacky, I guess. But the first time I had to load something on here when it was wet or snowy, whatever it was, uh, I really appreciated having those on there. They're fine. They're Honestly, if, if I get another tilt bed trailer, probably be the first thing I do is put these things on here. So super helpful. As far as the install goes, I, I don't know how much he paid for them. Um, I, I can see that they're just bolted on to the, to the frame or to the frame of the trailer, probably in the channel down there. I'd imagine it wasn't super hard to put on. I don't know how much they were, like I said, but definitely something I would put on in the future. Um, Stake pockets all down this thing. You, there's plenty of there's plenty of places to tie this tie equipment um, or any or any of your load down on this thing. There's stake pockets around the whole thing. One thing I do wish I don't know exactly how they would do it. Um, I understand that these are drive over fenders. The actual the actual structural integrity of the fender as far as securing equipment goes. I don't know if it's necessarily rated to to be as, as a secure point or a tie down point, but it'd be nice. There has been a couple of times where I've wanted to try to tie something down across in this area where the fenders are at, and I just didn't have that option. I don't want to hook a hook a chain, um, obviously, to the underside of that lip there. So that'd be one thing if if uh, Midsota, if you're watching, any way that you could find to make it so you could have some tie down points along the fenders, that would be helpful. Overall, though, love the drive over for fenders. Have had some equipment run up and over that. Seems to be uh, very strong as far as supporting something from the top down. So definitely, definitely put that in the likes. Uh, one thing I have noticed that I, I think that Minnesota can make a fix for is on the underside here of this, this tail, the boards run into just a couple more inches underneath here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Another inch or two underneath of there, and that's completely unsupported. So there's a cross member right here, and then underneath this lip right here, there's nothing else to support those boards. So you can see, the previous owner actually uh, broke this board right here. Luckily, we haven't broke any ourselves yet. Be a pretty easy fix overall. Um, all you would have to do is run a piece of angle iron underneath the bottom side of this plate right here, and then just weld it to the bottom. 
and it would support the underside of these um, two buys right here. I think that Midsota could easily do that during the manufacturing process. That'd be something I, I think that they could, I think that they should start offering on their other models. So, and who knows, maybe they do already. I don't know. Overall, I am a very big fan of this trailer. It's super easy uh, pulling with the with the load. We've had uh, several different pieces of equipment and attachments, um, different configurations. I've had. I've had what I would have considered stuff loaded a little bit farther back um, than than maybe ideal, just based off of you know where I was able to put some other attachments or whatnot. Um, and I've had some things pulled up a little bit closer, maybe than a little more tongue weight. And it seems like no matter no matter where you put something within reason, of course, um, this thing always pulls really really nice. We've had it, I, you know, pulled at 90 miles. Um, to a uh, couple different jobs before and uphill downhill um everywhere it just it pulls really really nicely it seems like there's a there's a very wide range of of a sweet spot i guess on this trailer as to as to where you can put your equipment and have it tow nice and not have too much you know negative tongue weight or too much tongue weight whatever the case may be so overall great trailer uh we've had it about a year i've i've used it what I would consider a fair amount of times, and I, uh, I I would definitely recommend it. If anybody's looking at Minnesota trailers, I got nothing bad to say about them at this point. So that's that. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this short video. Uh, this was a viewer requested video. Please, if you guys have anything you want to see, let me know. Uh, comment, like, subscribe to our channel. Um, Tell me what you guys want to see. We've got quite a bit of equipment, different things here uh, you guys want to learn about or just hear me ramble on about. I'm more than happy to do it. So thanks for watching. As always, have a great day.